Hello, my dear friends. I welcome you all again to our channel that is Best Notes Tutorials. Till now, we have learned MCQs on different writers. Some are individual work, some are uh, work in collaboration. So all those MCQs I have uploaded in the video. If you require, you can go through that one by one. If you prepare one video in one day, prepare it wholeheartedly so that you are confident on that particular writer or the era. Okay, so we will start today with our MCQs and here I have included many writers into one. Okay, we will discuss MCQs from various writers. So please be with me and prepare wholeheartedly. Let's begin with our today's MCQs. Question number one. Which poem of William Wordsworth is considered his greatest autobiographical epic? Your option A is Guilt and Sorrow. Option B, The Prelude. Option C, The Excursion. Option D, Peter Bell. So here your answer is option B, The Prelude. Let's see the highlighters. The Prelude or Growth of a Poet's Mind, an autobiographical poem is a poem in blank verse by the English poet William Wordsworth. Wordsworth began the prelude in 1798 at the age of 28 and continued to work on it throughout his life. He never gave it a title but called it the poem to Coleridge in his letters to his sister Dorothy Wordsworth. The poem was unknown to the general public until the final version was published in 1850, its present title given to it by his widow Mary. Question number two. In which poem does Wordsworth write, Come forth into the light of things, let nature be your teacher? Option A. The tables turned. Option B. The world is too much with us. Option C. I wandered lonely as a cloud. Option D. The solitary reaper. So here it is option A that is correct. The tables turned. In tables turned we find these lines. Come forth into the light of things. Let nature be your teacher. Highlighter says. The Table Turned is a poem written by William Wordsworth in 1798 and published in his Lyrical Ballads. The poem is mainly about the importance of nature. Wordsworth describes the beautiful songs of birds like the woodland, linnet and the throstle. The poem consists of eight ballad stanzas with 32 lines total. Each stanza follows equal except for the last that in comparison has a more irregular rhyme. Sorry, rhythm. Question number three. A hymn is, option A, a poem of joy, a poem of lament, a poem of praise, option D, a church song. So a hymn is a poem of praise. Highlighter says, a hymn is a type of song A hymn is a type of song, usually religious, specifically written for the purpose of adoration or prayer and typically addressed to a deity or a deities or to a prominent figure or personification. The word hymn derives from Greek which means a song of praise. The writer of him is known as a hymnist. Hymnist. The singing or composition of hymns is called hymnody. Okay, please remember these two words. You might get further questions on this. Question number four. For which profession John Keats had license but never practiced it. Option A. Apothecary. 
ऑप्शन बी आर्किटेक्ट ऑप्शन सी इंजीनियर ऑप्शन डी लॉयर ह्यूर ऑप्शन ए इज करेक्ट दैट इज एपोथिकेरी लेट्स द हाइलाइटर्स इन 1816 कीट्स बिकेम अ लाइसेंस्ड एपोथिकेरी बट ही नेवर प्रैक्टिस्ड हिज प्रोफेशन डेडिकेटिंग इंस्टेड टू राइट पोएट्री क्वेश्चन नंबर फाइव वॉट कॉज जॉन कीट्स डेथ ऑप्शन ए मलेरिया ऑप्शन बी ट्यूबक्यूलसिस ऑप्शन सी निमोनिया एंड ऑप्शन डी टाइफॉइड सो ह्योर इट इज ट्यूबक्यूलसिस विच टुक द लाइफ ऑफ जॉन किड्स हाईलाइटर्स जॉन किड्स वॉज एन इंग्लिश रोमांटिक पोएट बॉर्न इन द लेट सेवेंटीज किड्स सफर्ड अ सीरीज ऑफ हेमरेज इन एटीन ट्वेंटी एंड डाइड एट द एज ऑफ ट्वेंटी फाइव फ्रॉम ट्यूबक्यूलसिस लेट्स मूव टू क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्स Who called the wasteland a music of ideas? Option A, Alan Tate. Option B, J. C. Ransom. Option C, I. A. Richards. Option D, F. R. Lewis. So here, option B is correct. That is, J. C. Ransom is the one to consider the wasteland a music of ideas. John. Cron Ransom was an American educator, scholar, literary critic, poet, essayist, and editor. He considered to be a founder of the new criticism. Question number seven: What meter is a sonnet written? Option A: Spondaic tetrameter. Option B: Iambic pentameter. Option C, iambic tetrameter, and option D, iambic trimeter. So here, option is B, which is correct. That is iambic pentameter. In iambic pentameter, a sonnet is written. Highlighter says a sonnet is a short lyric poem that consists of fourteen lines, typically written in iambic pentameter, and following. a specific rhyme scheme let's move to question number 8 who invented the term sprung rhyme sorry rhythm sprung rhythm option a hopkins option b tennyson option c browning and option d wordsworth so here option a is correct that is hopkins gerald manley hopkins or j m hopkins is the one to invent the term sprung rhythm Gerald Manley Hopkins sprung rhythm an irang sorry irregular system of prosody developed by the 19th century english poet Gerald Manley Hopkins it is based on the number of stressed syllable syllables in a line and permits an indeterminate number of unstressed syllables Question number nine: Which of the following plays of Shakespeare has an epilogue? Option A: The Tempest. Option B: Henry Fourth, Part One. Option C: Hamlet. And option D: Twelfth Night. So here, option A is correct. The Tempest is the play which has an epilogue. The Tempest is a play by William Shakespeare, probably written in sixteen hundred and ten to sixteen hundred and eleven, and thought to be one of the last plays that Shakespeare wrote alone. After the first scene, which takes place on a ship at sea during the Tempest, the rest of the story is set on a remote island where the sorcerer Prospero. a complex and contradictory character lives with his daughter miranda and his two servants caliban a savage monster figure and ariel an airy spirit question number 10 who called shelly a beautiful and ineffectual angel beating in the void his illuminous wings in vain option a walter ratter option b ac swingburn 
option C Matthew Arnold and option D T S Eliot so here it is option C which is correct that is Matthew Arnold called Shelley a beautiful and ineffectual angel beating in the void his illuminous wings in his essay in criticism two series published in sorry second series published in 1888 matthew arnold described romantic poet p b shelley as he was a beautiful and effectual angel beating in the void his luminous wings in vain next question is question number 11 the line these a special providence in the fall of a sparrow occurs in option a hamlet option b henry fourth part 1 option c the tempest and option d twelfth night so here it is option a which is correct that is hamlet is the play where we find the line there is a special providence in the fall of a sparrow the tragedy of hamlet prince of denmark often shortened to hamlet is a tragedy written by william shakespeare sometimes between 1899 sorry 1599 and 1601 it is shakespeare's longest play with 30557 words this line occurs in hamlet fifth act next question number 12 the rarer action is in virtue than in vengeance this line occurs in shakespeare's option a hamlet option b king lear option c the tempest and option d the merchant of venice so here it occurs in option c that is the tempest the tempest is a play by william shakespeare probably written in 1610 to 1611 and thought to be the one of the last plays that shakespeare wrote alone after the first scene which takes place on a ship at sea during the tempest the rest of the story is set on a remote island where the sorcerer prospero prospero a complex and contradictory character lives with his daughter miranda and his two servants caliban a savage monster figure and ariel an airy spirit question number 13 who said keats a greek option a wordsworth option b coleridge option c is lamb option d shelley so it's shelley shelley who said keats was a greek Poshi Baisiseli who was born on 4th August 1792 and died on 8th July 1822 was one of the major English romantic poets widely regarded as one of the greatest lyrics and philosophical poets in the English language a radical in his poetry as well as in his political and social views Shelley did not see fame during his lifetime but recognition of his achievements in poetry grew steadily following his death shelley became a key member of a close circle of visionary poets and writers that included lord byron john keats leigh hunt thomas love peacock and his own second wife mary shelley shelley is the Shelley is the best known for classical poems such as Ozymandias, Ode to the West Wind, To a Skylark, Music When Soft Voices Die, The Cloud and The Mask of Anarchy. Question number 14. Which stanza form did Shelley use in his famous poem Ode to the West Wind? option a rima royal ottava rima option c terza rima and option d spenserian stanza so here option c is correct that is terza rima is the 
form which is used by B. B. Shelley in Ode to the West Wind. Ode to the West Wind is an ode written by P. B. Shelley in eighteen hundred and nineteen in Cascine Wood near Florence, Italy. It was originally published in eighteen twenty by Charles in London as part of the collection Prometheus Unbound, a lyrical drama in four acts with other poems. The poem Ode to the West Wind consists of five sections written in terza rima. Each section has consists each section has consists of four tarsets A B A, B C B, C D C, and D E D, and a rhymic couplet E E. The ode is written in iambic pentameter. Question number fifteen. The most notable characteristics of Keats' poetry is satire. Option A, sensuality. Option B, sensuousness. Option C, social reform. Option D. So it is option B that is sensuality, which is correct. The poetry of Keats is characterized by a style heavily loaded with sensualities, most notably. In the series of odes, this is typical of romantic poets as they aimed to accentuate extreme emotion through an emphasis on natural imagery. Question number sixteen: Which Augustan writer's epitaph reads, "One who strove with all his might to champion liberty"? Option A: Alexander Pope. Option B, Jonathan Swift. Option C, Henry Fielding. And option D, Daniel Defoe. Here, option B is correct. That is Jonathan Swift. Jonathan Swift was an Anglo-Irish satirist, essayist, political pamphleteer, poet, and cleric, who became dean of Saint Patrick's Cathedral, Dublin. Hence, his common Sobiquet Dean Swift. He was born on thirtieth November sixteen sixty seven in Dublin, Ireland, and he died on nineteenth October seventeen forty five in Dublin, Ireland itself. Question number seventeen: The praise of chimney sweepers is a poem by Blake, an elegy by William Wordsworth, an essay by Charles Lamb. Option D, an essay by William Hazlitt. So it is an essay by Charles Lamb. The praise of chimney sweepers is an essay by Charles Lamb. His most popular collection of essays, from which the praise of chimney sweepers is the essay of Elia. Question number eighteen. Who among the following made the statement poetry is a criticism of life under the conditions fixed for such a criticism by law of poetic truth and poetic beauty option a dr johnson option b sydney option c matthew arnold option d wordsworth so here option c is correct that is matthew arnold Matthew Arnold was an English poet and cultural critic who worked as an inspector of schools. He was born on 24th December 1822, Lelham, Staines upon Thames, United Kingdom. He died on 15th April 1888 in Liverpool, United Kingdom. Question number 19: Who is known as the master of dramatic monologue? Option A William Shakespeare, Option B Wallace Stevens, Option C Robert Frost and Option D Robert Browning. So here it is option D that is correct. Robert Browning is often considered the master of the form of the dramatic monologue. Let's move to the question number 20. What is the subtitle of the play Twelfth Night? Option A or what is you will option b or what you will 
ऑप्शन सी और वॉट यू लाइक इट ऑप्शन डी और वॉट यू थिंक सो हियर ऑप्शन बी इज करेक्ट दैट इज और वॉट यू विल ट्वेल्थ नाइट और वॉट यू विल इज अ रोमांटिक कॉमेडी बाई विलियम शेक्सपियर बिलीव टू हैव बीन रिटन अराउंड सिक्सटीन हंड्रेड एंड वन टू सिक्सटीन हंड्रेड एंड टू एज अ ट्वेल्थ नाइट्स एंटरटेनमेंट फॉर द क्लोज ऑफ द क्रिसमस सीजन फ्रेंड्स बाय दिस वी हैव कवर्ड अनदर सेट ऑफ एम सी क्यूज ऑन डिफरेंट इंग्लिश राइटर्स आई होप इट इज गोइंग टू बी हेल्पफुल फॉर यू ऑल Keep practicing on everyday basis till then we meet i take your leave i wish you all success if you prepare well thank you everyone we will meet very soon